Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about role play games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and made our way through the Steam Engine Room. June had a bit of a fever, so she kind of had to sit this one out, but Junpei, Santa, and Ace were able to make our way through, put some coal into the Steam Engine, move some discs around, and now we're here. Yes, the door's open! Given the circumstances, Junpei's happiness was certainly understandable. Ace seemed to be Ace seemed to share his excitement. All right, Junpei. Why don't you go get June now? Santa and I will keep an eye on this door. Santa snorted. Why do we need to do that? Even if it shuts, we know how to solve the puzzle now. We could just open it again. Well, I suppose that's true. Shall all three of us go and collect June then? Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Junpei handle it. He still seemed irritated by something, however, and sat down at, on the stairs pe petulantly. So, you are only interested in being contrary. A sighed with the air of a long-suffering parent. Alright, I'll go get June. I'll be right back. He gave a quick nod to Ace and Santa and dashed off down the stairs. Before long, he was back on the first floor, next to the conveyor belt in June. As he drew closer, she stood up slowly. Are you okay? He did his best to sound calm and nonchalant, but there was no hiding the genuine concern in his voice. Yes, I'm fine now. I'm sorry I made you worry. June blushed. He wasn't sure if she was embarrassed or still feverish. Just to make sure, he reached out and put his hand against her forehead. Good. You're feeling a lot better. She was feeling far less warm than she had earlier, but still wasn't down to what seemed normal to him. Are you sure you're all right? He had to be sure. June gave him a look. Oh, you're such a warrior, Jumpy. Oops, I mean warrior. June, June giggled. He wasn't sure if she just made a joke or not, but seeing her smile again made June pay feel at ease. If she was well enough to smile and laugh, then she really was feeling much better. Gave her a friendly poke on the forehead. Let's go. Go where? Oh, right, I didn't tell you. Uh, we got the exit open, so... Great! Let's go! June clasped her hands and nodded urgently. As they walked back toward the exit, Junpei noticed Santa sitting on the stairs. He was, however, holding something in his right hand and staring at it with a strange expression. Junpei and June slowed down and finally stopped in front of him. What are you looking at? Santa answered without looking up, his voice quiet. It's a photo. It's my sister. Sister? Santa, you've got a sister? Santa simply nodded. Yeah. Kid was as cute as a button. June cocked her head, confused. She was only about an inch tall then? Santa glared at her. Ah, sorry. I guess an inch is a little large for a button. Probably more like a half inch? Santa didn't smile or laugh. He simply turned back to his picture and spoke. I was her Santa Claus. This sudden revelation took Junpei by surprise. He had no idea what Santa meant. He glanced at June, who shook her head. She didn't know either. Have you ever heard the story of the two Santa Clauses? It goes that a long time ago, there were two Santas. One of them wore white, the other one wore black. The white Santa gave presents to good kids, and the black Santa played tricks on bad kids. They went on like that for a while, but eventually the black Santa's tricks started to get worse and worse. Pretty soon the white Santa couldn't stand it anymore, and he stabbed the black Santa to death. When he stabbed the other Santa, the white Santa got blood all over his clothes. And that's why, these days, his clothes are red. You could say that red is all that's left of the Black Santa. Junpei was silent. He could think of nothing to say. June was staring at Santa, sadness plain on her face. He continued. I wonder which Santa I am. The White Santa or the Black Santa? All right, let's go. Santa stood up suddenly, his downcast demeanor gone. He shoved the picture back in his pocket and headed back up to the stairs, taking them two at a time. 
Junpei and Jun looked at one another. There was nothing they could think of to say. Hey, what are you two doing? Let's get moving. Come on. Santa's voice echoed across the room from above them. They nodded and followed him quickly up the stairs. Ace was waiting for them at the top. He was leaning against the handrail. He looked very tired. The door had shut, but it wasn't cause for concern. Junpei quickly solved the disc puzzle a second time, and the door opened once again. In single file, they walked through. After walking for nearly 15 feet, they found themselves in front of a metal door. It opened easily enough, and they passed through it as well. A new room stretched out before them. Is this a... warehouse? No, I believe this is a cargo room. This must be where they st store all of this vessel's freight. There are wooden crates everywhere. I wonder how old they are. Junpei, Ace, and Jun had stopped unconsciously, pausing to take in their new surroundings. Santa's voice broke through their mo momentary trance. Well, we probably ought to start with finding the exit, right? Let's get going! And once again... We find ourselves in an escape room. Go ahead and cut that, cut out that audio. Once again, find ourselves in an escape room. Cut the cargo room this time. It's pretty big. And for those of you who've played this game before, on the right side of the screen, uh, on the right side of the top screen, there's a puzzle there that is very infamous for being very bad. So I'll show you how to quickly get through it. Uh, so first, the first thing we ought to do is go ahead and click on some of these white bags that we see around here. We click on one, there are a bunch of bags here. I wonder what's in them. And it's a photo of Santa. A card with Santa's face printed on it. I remember my first playthrough of this game being super creeped out by it. What's that? It's a card. It has a headshot on it. A headshot? Yeah. I'm not really sure what purpose this would this could possibly serve. But yeah, there are several bags around here. Next we have uh, the Ninth Man. The card with the Ninth Man's face printed on it. We move back over here, we have... Seven! The card with Seven's face printed on it. Two more cards. Hey look, it's us! Not cool, man took this picture without my permission. It looks pretty cool, though. You look really handsome in this picture. Hey, knock it off, lovebirds. W what We're not a couple. Not at all. Not in any way. Hmm. There's a pretty cool-looking dude on this card. <laughs> I can't take my eyes off it. There's a pretty cool-looking dude on this card. I feel enraptured. There's a pretty cool-looking dude on this card. I just want to rub my face on it. <laughs> Pretty cool looking dude on this card. I want to eat it. <laughs> There's a pretty cool looking dude on this card. It belongs in a shrine. There's a pretty cool looking dude on this card. It belongs in a museum. There's a pretty cool looking dude on this card. I bet I could get quite a bit for the for this online. There's a pretty cool looking dude on this card. I feel kind of unfulfilled. Um, my picture. Huh. Right next to us, we have June. This must be... Oh no! Don't look at it! I'm not cute at all, and I'm not photogenic, and I don't look sexy either. Next to Clover, my skin looks gross. Not, I'm not, and I'm not sexy like Lotus. I know guys go, go for women who look like Lotus, but, 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 I'm trying to. I'm doing the best I can. So please don't call me a board or a trash can or a cutting board. Wait a minute, I haven't said anything like that. Have I? This card has a picture of June on it. Looking over to the right, we have more bags. Snake! I haven't seen you in a while. Snake. Is that Snake's card? Yeah, you want to see it? No, that's fine. The card has Snake's face on it. Oh. 
Clover. This is Clover's card. You now looking at this photo, she's kind of cute, isn't she? Huh? What's up? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Why does her smile make me feel cold? Card with Clover's picture on it. And Ace. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we only have eight so far. It's Ace's card. Looks like some kind of European lord. Oh, my headshot. You want to see it? It's actually a pretty good picture. No, I don't need to see it. In fact, we really ought to get back to our search. It's a card with Ace's face on it. And the last one, I think, is over here with these boxes. It's locked. We need, we need the key. All the boxes have numbers on them. Do they... Oh! Ace bent down and picked up something that had been sitting next to the box. Junpei, take a look at this. Cards. We have Lotus. There's a picture of Lotus on this card. Man, her hair is ridiculous. It's like clay or something. It says the pot to the kettle. I was just about to make that joke. This card has Lotus's picture on it. They had finally collected all nine picture cards. All that remained was to insert the cards into the slots at the front of each box. Junpei stared at the cards in his hands. Ace peered over his shoulder at them. You know which card goes in which box, yes? Junpei gave him a look. Uh, yeah. Of course I do. It's really obvious. You just match our numbers to the numbers on the boxes. So for instance, the card with the picture of Ace on it goes into box 1. The card with the picture of Snake on it goes into box 2, and so on. Uh, ah, I see. Junpei thought he might have imagined it, but he could have sworn Ace stiffened. I'll leave the rest to you. He quickly turned and walked away. Strange, Junpei thought. Oh well, whatever. Doing his best to clear his mind for the task at hand, he turned back toward the boxes. It was time to solve the puzzle of the nine boxes. Nine cards with pictures and bo nine boxes. Nine cards, nine pictures, nine boxes, nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. Junpei stared at them for a moment and then began. Ace's card went to box number one, Snake's into box number two, Santa's card into box number three, Clover's card into box number four, Junpei's card into box number five, June's card into box number six, Seven cards into box, num box number seven, Lotus's card into box number eight. And finally, the ninth man's card went to box number nine. As soon as he inserted all of the cards, all nine box lids open popped open at once. He peered inside. In each box was a single pin. They looked a little like sewing pins, but much thicker. Junpei collected them all quickly and shoved them into his pocket. Nine pins! These, these look kind of like pins you use for sewing. There are nine of them in total, and they have numbers on them that run from one to nine. So with these pins in hand, we want to actually make our way upstairs, once again moving upstairs in one escape room. These stairs, they go up three stories. What are you waiting for, Junpei? Whatever, I'm going. Maybe Junpei's just afraid of heights. Uh, right here, we have some buttons, some holes here, and this th thing over to the side. I don't know how to describe it. And there are six holes here. And it looks like the pins I just found would be perfect fit. Would be a perfect fit for them. The ones you found in the nine boxes, right? Well, why don't you try it? All right, let's see what happens. I think 2, 4, and 6 should go here on the top part, and 3, 5, and 7 on the bottom part. Well, some of them lit up. Yeah, 3 and 6. I wonder if there's some kind of rule that determines which lights go on. Well, I put the 2, 4, and 6 pins on the top part, and the 3, 5, and 7 pins on the bottom part. Hmm. You think? Think maybe it's the digital root? The digital root. 2 plus 4 plus 6 equals 12. The digital root of 12 is 3. Therefore, the light 3 turns on. 3 plus 5 plus 7 equals 15. The digital root of 15 is 6. Therefore, light 6 turns on. Makes sense, right? I see. The light that matches the digital root of the pins inserted on the top and lower parts will light up. So that's how it works. Well, there's one other thing I'd like to check. Well, if he wants to try, he's certainly welcome to. So, he's put the 1, 2, and 3 pins on the top and 6, 7, and 8 pins on the bottom. Oh. They, they turned off. 6 plus eight, 7 plus 8 equals 21. The digital root of 21 is 3. Therefore, light 3 turns off. 
1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. The digital root of 6 is 6. Therefore, the light 6 turns off. Oh, I get it now. If the digital root for the pins you insert is the same as the number on the lights that are lit, those lights turn off. Yeah, looks like that's the trick. Alright, now we know how it works. You want to give it a try? Wait, you mean you know what we're supposed to be doing with these lights? Well, no, but I figure we could try and see if we can turn them all on, you know? I figure something's gotta happen if we can manage that. Turn on the lights, huh? Okay, Junpei, let's make sure we know how this works, alright? Pick one of the six holes, and pick one of the pins in your hand, and insert it into the hole. Keep it up un until all six of the holes are filled. Once all of the holes are filled, the lights with the numbers that correspond to the digital roots of the pins in the upper and lower parts will turn on. However, if a digital root corresponds to a light that is already on, the light that will be turned off. The light will be turned off. The goal is to turn all the lights on. All right, let's do it. That was a very long and cumbersome tutorial. I get that they were trying to thoroughly explain it, but my God. So we go one, three, four on the top. Two, five. Nine on the bottom. We've got seven and eight. One, two, three on the top. Six, eight, nine on the bottom. Three, four, six on the top. One, two, nine on the bottom. And finally, one, three, seven on the top, four, six, nine on the bottom. All the lights are on and the shutters open. Hey, does that mean, yeah, we gotta do it again. Man, and I thought I was doing so well. So go ahead and put the pins in here. Okay, so we got nine holes, F above them. I don't know what the F means, but I do know one thing. What's that? This time there's nine holes, so we need to insert insert nine pins. Man, that's boring. Why don't you just try it, alright? If you'll remember, F in hexadecimal is 15, I believe? Yep, 15. So we need to go ahead and make the digital roots of each row 15. So, so for example, 8 plus 1 plus 6 is 15. Then 8 plus 3 plus 4 is also 15, because 8 plus 7. And then, 1 plus 5 plus 9 is also 15. And finally, the last two ones, 3 plus 5, 3 plus 5 plus 7, and the final one here is obviously 2. Everything's matched up. There we go, all pins inserted, all lights slit. We did it. Power's on now. Looks like there's electricity going on the monitor on top now. Alright, let's see if we can activate the device on the top. Green button, red button, and a lever. I wonder what these do. I think this might help. What? What the hell is this? Where did he find this? What is that? Where'd you find it? I found it when you were messing around with the pinholes. It looks like instructions for the thing. According to what it says here, this thing's a remote control for that. That? Yeah, that. What's he pointing? Oh. That machine over there. Apparently it's called the Pushmaster 5000. Are you serious? Whatever. So, what are we supposed to do with the Pushmaster 5000? I don't want to hear complaints about naming conventions from the man who came up with Science Boy. You see the coffin over there on top of the crates? Yeah. Don't you want to know what the deal is with it? I do. You want to check it out? Yeah. Alright, how do you think we're going to get there? Well... And there were some crates on the right side of the fence that someone piled up like stairs. Maybe if we make a path to the coffin from there, how would we do that? Line up the crates, I guess? Yeah, that sounds about right. I guess this is just another of Zero's puzzles. Yeah. Anyway, let's give this sh let's give this a shot. Oh, looks like the Pushmaster 5000 runs off of battery. So to keep it from using up its energy too fast, it's been programmed so that it's only start moving once the path has been completed, completely programmed in. Alright, keep that in mind. New material has been added to the file screen. That's just an explanation for how it resets itself when you accidentally mess up the puzzle. The monitor shows a top-down view of the area. Uh, once I send my orders to the Pushmaster 5000, I just pull the lever. This is the reset button, it allows me to start over again. 
Do I have to push the lever? All right, let's give this a try. Sure thing. Just keep in mind that there is a limit on the battery, all right? Battery dies after 50 moves. At least that's what it says on the manual. 50 moves, huh? Also keep in mind that the Pushmaster 5000 can't move the heavy metal crates. Okay? Got it. Instructions. Square adjacent to the Pushmaster 5000 is touched. The Pushmaster 5000 will move to that square. If there is a crate in the way, the Pushmaster 5000 will push up to, the, to a single crate. Move the crates appropriately and efficiently to fill the yellow areas. Okay. So we've got a tutorial on the top screen to show how to do this. This is a very uh, infamous puzzle just for being kind of difficult. Uh, so I'll just show how to get through this. There we go. Many people have struggled on that in the past, myself included. So, yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, I'm done putting in the program. What do I do next? Just be quiet and watch. See, it's moving already. That is a great name, though, the Pushmaster 5000. Awesome, the Pushmaster 5000 did just what I told it to and lined up all the crates. Great, now we can reach the coffin. We just need to climb those crates over by the fence. So we move all the way back down. Didn't want to move over there. We can move right over here, vault over the fence, and open up the coffin. And they walked slowly past the row of crates until they came to the coffin. They stopped and nodded to one another, and Junpei put his hand on the lid of the coffin. m m, -m mummy Just kidding. He smirked hardly at his own joke. Junpei grumbled and shook his head. Whatever, just open it. Junpei resisted the urge to remind Santa that he would have had it open a long time ago if Santa hadn't interrupted, and quickly threw off the lid of the coffin. They peered inside. Contrary to what they'd expected, the inside of the coffin was quite large. It was mostly empty, but not completely so. Laying on the bottom was a rusty key. And next to the key... It's a gun! Yeah, a revolver. It looks pretty old. I wonder if this is a replica. Junpei reached down slowly and cautiously picked up the revolver. In his hand, it felt heavy. He checked the cylinder. There were six bullets. He'd never seen a real gun or even a real bullet before. He couldn't tell if these were real or not. The barrel was rifled. Nothing seemed to be blocking it. As they had said, the gun was a very old one. However, it appeared to have been well maintained. If it was a real gun, Junpei thought it would most likely function perfectly. If it was real, holding the gun made Junpei feel unpleasant. Carefully, he placed it back in the coffin. You're not gonna take it? Of course not. All something like this is gonna do is cause more trouble. It's a powerful weapon that gives one person a huge advantage. Something like that would, have, would be way too dangerous to have around. We're in enough danger already. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Maybe... Maybe Zero put this gun here, hoping that something like that might happen. In other words, maybe he put it here to make us fight each other. In that case, we most certainly we should most certainly leave it here. I, for one, have no desire to let Zero control me. The others nodded. They had no desire to be under Zero's control either. Okay, we've got that figured out, but you aren't going to leave that key in there, are you? Yeah, yeah, of course not. Junpei picked up the rusty key and slid the top of the coffin back into place. And the gun back where they had found it. Rusty key. Maybe I can use this. So, of course, with this key, just as usual, we are now allowed to leave the escape room. Up the stairs, through the door, put this key in here, and yes, sounds like it did it. Yay! Looks like it's open, Jumpy! I see. This key should be- this key should open the door. Hey, what are you waiting for? Let's go! 
Yes, it's opening. And with that, we have reached the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!